What's up, you filthy casuals? Welcome to the Casual Shenanigans Gaming Podcast, a podcast all about the irreverent love of gaming. I'm one of your hosts, Jeremiah, and tonight I'm joined by Joel. Hey! Dave. Hey, guys. And James. What's up? Now, Joel, if you that looks notice- like cough syrup. <laughs> the bottle looks like cough syrup. <laughs> okay. Blueberry. <laughs> it's pretty tasty. Doing, doing intros right now, guys. Oh. Oh, so, hey! The show did I'm- start. Hey, guys, uh, Jeremiah's here. Jeremiah, Jeremiah's a little crabby tonight because he's got a crappy chair. So <laughs> it's true. It's just, true. Just deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you think that Joel and my cameras look better tonight and Dave's looks as good as always, thank you to our Patreon supporters. <laughs> we got a great deal on some Logitech web cameras that can actually do 1080p and better frame rates in dark conditions. So. Hey, don't we look nice? James's is going in the mail. That'll be going out to him shortly, and uh, he should. Oh, it's so blurry. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It really is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon. You can go to patreoncom shenanigans and you can give as little as one dollar per month, and it helps make the show possible. It pays for the website and the Teamspeak channel, and. I mean, let's be honest. Buys us web cameras and mics when needed. So thank you to everybody who supports yeah. us. Uh, we are saving the rest of your money when the weather starts lifting a little bit. We have plans for at least one really epic casual shenanigans original and possibly some other stuff as we're able. So thank you guys for all of that. Now, our main topic tonight is the Nintendo Switch. James has been feeding us rumors for a year, year and a half, about a year and a half, I think. There's been crazy rumors of one kind or another, but now Nintendo has had their official unveiling event where they've showed off most of the details about the Switch that we will expect to see before it actually releases, because it's coming out very quickly. Uh, there, this might be the shortest announcement to release date for any console that I remember. Uh, you guys remember well, a shorter one? The, was it the Saturn or the Dreamcast? That yeah, was I, don't, like I don't remember when that The next day. Out. Really? Oh, wow. I remember it being very, very fast, because I remember seeing commercials for like the basketball games or something coming out on it in Virtua Fighter, and it was just like, whoa, this is out. It was not, it was, I wonder if, I wonder if just to, they did that just to save on money for like promotion or just, or anything. Yeah, Nintendo Switch, it's out. James, I feel like you need to be the one to run us through <laughs> the bulk of what the Switch is because you've been flying that flag for quite a while now, so. Well, somebody had to fly the flag though. It's not that I loved the flag, but <laughs> I had to fulfill my duty. Uh huh. <laughs> Well, now you got me looking up this other thing. What other thing? The I think it was the Sega. I mean, I can explain it with it. Well, the, yeah. The while while, you start while the, James the, is looking up I do that have thing, one he's interested. In. Okay. I gotta know. I gotta know. All right, Joel. What's <laughs> Nintendo Switch? Talk to us about it. Well, Nintendo Switch is, and I was actually reading an interesting article this morning. Uh, by it was an interview with Reggie Filzame. I think how you pronounce his last name. I can't um, pronounce it. Uh, he's the Nintendo of America kind of main uh, mm-hmm. speaker. The guy, the my body is ready guy. Anyways, <laughs> uh, he was talking about saying how even still to this day, Nintendo Wii U was very, very hard to explain to people. And they realized that was a huge, huge you know mistake. Um, but he was saying that with the Switch this time around, it's like it's a console that you can bring with you anywhere. And it's just like, that's it. Simple. Done. Like. That's kind of how you can explain it. Um, yeah, and so basically what it is, is it's, it's um, if you think of the Nintendo Wii U gamepad, or it's it's basically a slightly bigger Nintendo or PlayStation Vita, but on each side where the controllers are, they slide off, and they themselves are a controller. And so you can actually hand one to your friend, and it, it has... It has buttons very similar, like the, uh, the Super NES controller, actually, with shoulder buttons, everything on it, which is really cool the way it works. Um, and so you can play split screen games on the Nintendo Switch screen itself. And then when you're home, you can put it into the dock and it will display it on the TV and you can p- continue playing the game wherever you want. And you can pull those controllers off, connect them to this little like middle piece, um, or you can just hold them on your sides. And that's actually one of the things that I, I love the most about the Nintendo Wii uh, was actually having how the controller worked, you can kind of just rest it on your side as opposed to even like a regular controller. It's always got to be in front of you. It's, it, it was actually really comfortable just to lay back, have your hands left or right. It, it, like that was actually kind of comfortable. Um, so you can do that. Um, they also 
include a or you can you can buy a, a pro controller which is very much like a 360 or xbox one type controller um and use that instead um i read something else that was really cool about the controllers is to sync them so let's say you buy a new one or you go over to a friend's house and you want to you just bring your controller and i thought there's such small controllers that would be really fun actually if you knew someone else who had it bring your controller and the way to pair is you literally slide it onto the dock pull it back off and it's paired like that's oh, like, nice. there's no there's nothing else there's no it's just like i was like oh that's pretty cool that's a i mean it makes sense because <laughs> you, you're going to probably do that quite a lot um but yeah it's it's basically kind of a a, a souped up nintendo 3ds um with a more with a more like phone like touchscreen as opposed to the capacitive one that the wii u had where she was like a stylus like the 3ds this one actually is more like a mobile phone touchscreen with multiple finger inputs and everything um it does you can the games come on little mini cartridges like the nintendo ds or 3ds and they're apparently i, I saw i think james you sent it to me they're like smaller than the 3ds which i was like holy crap we've really come a long way especially you have games that are going to be like 16 gigs or something you know on these tiny little cards but it's just that's pretty cool. Um, apparently, some games have you know a small install, but there's rumors. hasn't been really said yet. I don't know if you've heard anything different, James. But there's a lot of people rumors that the patches for games might actually install right onto the game card itself. I haven't heard so, that, but that's interesting. If so that's the case. I, I have a feeling it probably won't, but that would be really cool because that would save some internal space on your you know on the Nintendo if you. Don't if you're not buying digital, um, that which would let's be cool. honest, you don't buy discs. No, anymore. I don't. <laughs> I don't buy discs. Although I, I, I might actually do for the Nintendo because I might not have like a lot of games actually. So I might actually p probably do. There's that. a very good chance so. you won't have a lot of games. <laughs> <laughs> it's Nintendo. There's a really good chance. But I agree. Just the idea of having like cartridge games again that you don't have to install, that'd be kind of cool. Now they say you don't have to install them. I, I hope that means. They're like they're not you know they're gonna keep saves on your console i'm sure but i hope yeah. that means they don't have to add like a gig or two because that might not count as an install but i hope there's some method for them keeping the the space on the console itself light like i'm what yeah, i really want to know is like when they patch it i'm assuming they will have the ability to patch games uh what happens when they patch a game does that install into the cartridge probably not it probably installs into the console itself so i think yeah there's a good hmm. chance most people will probably want to expand the storage uh, yeah. But fortunately, it's just a regular SD card, which is what I've always been peeved at Sony for, is selling those proprietary oh, cards gosh. for the PSP and the Vita. Because it made well, it so Well, for the 3DS, you, you, could get any, you could get any kind of micro SD card to go in it. You don't have to get a Nintendo one. No, and I know. They did announce you, I think they it's, have, it's good that they're doing that. Yeah. They, they did announce I mean, the Wii was have, the same way. Yeah. Like, all the way oh, back to the true. Wii. They will support up to two terabyte SD cards, or whatever those things are. So, apparently, like, the two terabyte, they're not even created yet. I think the highest one you can get right now is 500 gigs, but they support the whatever the oh no. it is up to Five, two only 500 gigs the size of a postage stamp. No, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. it's crazy though. But th that's good. Yeah. That's good that they at least have you can that. literally install the entire Nintendo library and still have like 80 percent of your <laughs> card left. Yep. I'm <laughs> curious if in the next couple of years, though, you know, the base system will have 64 gigs, you know, what I mean, or they'll or they'll just offer ones that already come with higher you know internal memory and stuff but I, my guess is all for all of it to kind of keep the price down low because it is a pretty awesome looking system for a fairly good price you know for running you know the kind of games they're you know they've shown off on this device that's handheld plus you know pop it in and play on the tv um any other any other things james i'm trying to think of anything else um we don't have to get to it now but i do want to talk about you know we with announcing so many rumors over the last year how many rumors actually ended up being true and yeah. you know, the ones that ended up being false or unsubstantiated? I feel like some were like kind of close in a way. The, you know, the, well, I mean, the patents were all pretty much spot on. Even even yeah. the ones that you didn't expect, like the, the IR, IR sensing, mm -hmm. that was a patent that was like, how's that going to work? But yeah, them showing it at the bottom of the controller was actually pretty fascinating. Having seen the the patent for it yeah um of course the slide on controllers and the different attachments and stuff for uh for anybody curious how are they going to do you know console quality on a handheld well it's actually pretty intelligent way they're going to do it 
uh, the screen is 720p and it can output at up to 1080p, although games like Zelda are going to be 900p. Given Nintendo's art style, they can get away with 900p on a TV pretty easily. But the, the, the tablet itself is 720p and when you're in tablet mode, the console will downclock itself to about half its normal <laughs> speed. And then when you plug it into the dock, it goes into full power mode and they can output up to 1080p. Now it has an HDMI 1.4 port, so it can, in theory, output up to 4K 30 hertz. But that that could mean, in theory, like they could do Netflix streaming or something. Yeah, I, I was I, curious about that just for at least Netflix or something else. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I don't I I think, don't think that would be good. Yeah, I don't think there's any chance they're going to be doing like 4K gaming. I don't think Nintendo's going to jump right from like 500 to 720p all the way up to 4K <laughs> in one generation. That's not really their speed. Uh, but that does seem to be a pretty good way to handle the the downsides of having a, a very portable thing that you want to have console like power. So uh, I think that's pretty smart. I like that this looks a little more grown up than the Wii U. Um, yeah. yeah. <sighs> for you sure. say that, but I ordered the, what, I ordered <laughs> you, the, I ordered the neon too. one. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, like you look at it in the dock, it doesn't, the Wii U looks like a $40 yeah. child's baby's first tablet toy. Like, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, the, like yeah. it, it, it's very the much on the mo- screen's awful. Yeah, like and this is more like out. a hey, there's going to be actual games on this. Like that's what it it looks like. But, um, so I have some concerns overall. I think it's a cool idea, and I appreciate Nintendo trying something risky because that's paid off for them in the past. It's also not paid off for them in the past, so we'll see. I mean, yeah, I mean it's kind of a ballsy move to stick with in a way what the Wii U started, and the Wii U failed really bad, and but in a way they're like, hey, you know what? we think there's something in this we're going to take make it the 2.0 version and yeah. slim everything down you can actually take the game anywhere not just in your house so you, i think well, that, that, that is, that is pretty kind of ballsy to take do it. you couldn't take it in another room barely nope yeah i could i couldn't even play from upstairs so now i do have some concerns uh the 300 dollars price point is cool it's what you would hope that they would aim for because it's nintendo and given their price points in the past um, I was a little bit skeptical before we had this announcement just because it seemed like they were trying to do an awful lot for a reasonable price point. So my skepticism was mostly I didn't want it to be a screen like the Wii U that was going to be, you know, I wanted them to cut like some huge corners that would make the overall experience suck. So it sounds like from the hands-ons and stuff that whatever, it sounds like that the console itself hardware wise is pretty decent. Um, there are some downsides. The Pro Controller they've been showing off in their videos is $70. So if you're like me, and I haven't tried one yet, so I I definitely want to try it before I pass judgment, I have serious concerns that I'll actually be able to use the (laughs) Joy-Cons. Not me trying to pick on Nintendo, but from looking at people holding them, I have enough trouble using normal controllers sometimes. I honestly don't think I can play a game like with a Joy-Con. Even even in the dock? Oh, uh, not necessarily in the dock. Like, that looks more normal. But I mean, like, when you split them apart and use them, I don't know that I could do that. I would be the type of person, like, the Pro Controller is designed for people like me who just want a normal controller experience. But those are $70. Um, If you want a Joy-Con grip that charges the controllers, they charge while they're hooked to the tablet. They, when you plug them into the, people are calling it what the dog, the dog-faced controller, which I... I guess I see because it looks like the handles that come out look a little bit like dog ears, um, <laughs> but it doesn't charge when it's hooked into that unless you buy a thirty dollar version of that. A set of Joy Cons is eighty dollars, or it's fifty dollars for one. Fifty dollars okay. for one seems like that's kind of ridiculous, given that you can get pretty much any yeah, other. Yeah, it's pretty for expensive. That. Yeah, it does have a lot of stuff packed into it. I do think is pretty phenomenal, but it's it is that's a lot of money. But I mean, it's, how, it's how much money? But did, it's not necessary. Yeah, to, Microsoft. To me, it's not necessary to buy to play two players. Every yeah. game that's going to be two player that I'm going to buy up front, the one, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, will be will be used with the the individual controllers with two people. I think they could have hit a lower price point though. That's the thing is like tons and tons of R and D goes into Microsoft and Sony's controllers. And they've managed to keep them at around the fifty to sixty dollar mark. And unless this is a huge step up from previous uh, Nintendo consoles, I'm betting the build quality of the Microsoft and Sony stuff will still be a little bit higher. I'd love to be wrong, but I forget the the chart or the the amount of charge time on the actual little remote or the Joy Cons is pretty ridiculous. I forget what it was, but I was I remember I was really surprised at hearing like, oh wow, that's actually pretty long. 
um, especially because of the rumble function they have in it. So I'm like, I wonder, I really, I'm really curious to find out like how that works and you know, how much battery life it takes doing any of the rumble functions, you know, cause you'd think that would take a lot of power. It does, no, but you know, Kylo Ren. uh, it does, but I mean, you think that, but like, have we really felt the disadvantages of having rumble in our wireless controllers? Like, honestly, I don't know. I mean, I don't feel like I'm missing out um, on a ton of, like, I don't well, feel I mean, like... You, my... you never know what you're missing out. Cause no, I know, but I just mean, like, I, I I don't feel like that is necessarily a problem these days, um, but I guess we don't really know. Well, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not a problem, but it's something really cool. And, and, and actually, one of the coolest things, this is actually the most excited I've been about Nintendo in a very long time, because I was not very excited at all for the Wii U. Like, I was excited for some of the games that came out, but not for the whole device. I'm excited this time around because the controllers, in my opinion, look really fun. They look more like just a regular grown up type of experience. And it looks so much easier that if Joy and I are going to play, she's going to have a similar experience because the controller is not going to be one, a giant game pad. And they have to design games around like someone. T I don't know, like because even with Mario Party, like the person on the game pad didn't have a really fun experience. They didn't get to play <laughs> with everyone else or against everyone. It just felt weird. The whole experience was just kind of it was interesting. But it always felt like someone had a better experience than you, depending on which controller you had. You know, you always felt like you had like the crappy off-brand ones. <laughs> oh, oh no, I got Mad Cats. Fun yeah, with yeah. Me. yeah, yeah. Well, no, Mad Cats is good. Remember? <laughs> right, Mad oh, Cats. Oh right. Yeah. And they bring the power, power to the players. players. <laughs> I, I hear. Oh, yeah. I totally forgotten that we were sponsored by them. <laughs> but there was something I did think about this, and I was thinking something that is kind of actually, in a way, sorely missed on PCs, outside of graphics is and this is not always a good thing but it could be a good thing is the fact that like with new controls or new systems like pc doesn't usually have something every year that's like hey guys we came up with a new thing for you to use to make games with it's usually here's more graphics here's more cpu power here's a better screen but it stays about there it's not like here's a whole new keyboard system that everyone's going to get in and use it i was thinking but it is kind of cool thinking with you know nintendo doing with the wii motion plus and all that stuff back in the day there's some things can come out that could be really cool but it's cool that they kind of make the new rumble functions or various stuff that if people want to do it you like there's more things to utilize to create experiences and that's why i think it's pretty cool i think that's kind of in, i think that's really neat that nintendo can do that or just consoles in general sometimes because their controllers I don't know. It makes more of a, a reason to add stuff like that in it. They might they don't always use it just like the touchpad on the PS4 other than maybe for maps and stuff like that. But it's cool sometimes adding those features because it allows game, you know, de game developers to do something with it. Because I was thinking I was like, yeah, with I mean, with PC, I'm like, we've had same similar type mice for a very long time. Keyboards, they do basically the same things, you know, I mean, they they've added a lot to like there's lots of optional peripherals. There are it's not normally like you don't get new yeah. standard peripherals. But I, none, but, yeah, of, none of them I mean, change standard. your experience. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's though, what I mean. Like standard, accuracy yeah. or speed. It doesn't it doesn't create new experiences. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, to be technically Debatably. correct, the, the PC has probably the most new peripherals of any platform. Yeah, and uh, but, but, not standard. Uh, but I mean by but, standard. But not being yeah, yeah, yeah. used like, by everybody. Okay, do, yeah. you remember, do you remember the one that was supported with Portal 2? I actually almost bought it. It was a really cool controller. The thing where you like... Yeah, you, it, you like push it in around. It looked amazing. It supported Half-Life 2 and Portal 2. That. I forget the name of it. I was really excited to get it, but I generally don't get those because it's like, yay, one game... And, and, you know, not enough people do, will have it remember, The developers will actually do it. Do you remember so. for Resident Evil 4, there was the GameCube controller that was a chainsaw? Yeah, exactly. I remember seeing yeah. that GameStop. I was like, I want that so bad, I <laughs> will never use this again. <laughs> like, it's probably yeah. not even good to play Resident Evil with, because you'll be running around the like, what the heck? <laughs> so not yeah. quite that bad, but... <laughs> yeah, and again, yeah, I'm not digging saying. anything. I'm just saying the yeah. way you play sometimes consoles, they have a little bit more wiggle room to create a more create a standard and stuff the same way uh, n64 created the first analog joystick like like that was like became standard with a thumb grip and everything like that was huge and now everyone has that you know mm -hmm. so i just think that's cool i mean yeah they've yeah, done a button. lot over the years yeah with, you know analog buttons and adding multiple buttons on the controller yeah i was because um, i was telling dave the other day i was like just thinking like i have the razor abyssus abyssus mouse or whatever abyss well, yeah, whatever um, it abyssus is. Yeah, it's <laughs> just abyss. It's, it's not it's abyss. Not abyss. <laughs> it's abyssus. A b y s s u s. Abyssus. Yeah, it's weird. Abyssus. Ugh. 
That's yeah. a weird Anyways, name. Anyways, I bought two of them. It's been a great mouse. And I, but, but every <laughs> once in a while, I kind of think of... What's that? <laughs> One free chand. <laughs> but it made me think. I was like, it's crazy. Like, ever since I started using a computer, like, I've just used left, right, scroll. You know? I know there's other ones. <laughs> other buttons. You get tons. Look at all these extra buttons no, no, I have. No, <laughs> I know I know they make all those. Yeah, but, yeah. like, there's never been a standard where everyone, like uses that i've had a few that has like the windows button and i think i've used it once but i forget about it because it's not like the standard set right. that every yeah. game uses or something because yeah. every game uses r for reload you know what i mean or, or like the keyboard and various stuff but i was like it'd be interesting to see like will it ever change where there's like a new standard of something one of the biggest standards i think would be awesome i, I don't know why they haven't done this yet is create linear keys so they still have a click but if you press lightly, it would actually move the car slower or move your character slower. So it could still have linear because like I think there of are I think there are touch sensitive keyboards. Are there, are there Dave? Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're pretty like awesome. You can actually like push this a little bit. There's mechanical uh, keyboards that have like a mechanical switch that has layers to it, like presser switches. Ah. That, I, I, feel like, I feel like I feel like that could become a really good standard. Or it's just yeah, it's just in the background where you don't have to use it all the time. But I was just thinking, you know, for some computer games, like when you're trying to like tap to go around a corner, you kind of have to like just tap. You can't slowly begin to move sometimes. I think that's one of those things where cost is a big prohibiting factor. Yeah. Like having an actual pressure switch for every I was at 108 keys would be ridiculously expensive. Uh, and also, if you get to that point where it's like, well, I need analog controls. It's like, well, controllers work with all games anyway, like already. And they're 50 bucks. Yeah. Oh, OK. <laughs> I feel like the biggest change to like the keyboard mouse like setup was probably like the trackpad. I think that's just become so standard. Like everybody has, you know, on laptops. Like that's don't like forget the, the little and over you know red I mean? ball, the nub. <laughs> oh yeah, the power nub. <laughs> I don't think it was called the power nub. But <laughs> <laughs> it was called that's, far that's what your worse mom calls it. <laughs> nub. Yeah, so, I, I think I think you, Steam tried with the the the, the, the controller. But it just never took off, and well, I, we don't. We, that, actually, we don't. We don't know how whether it's taken off or not. I mean, they're selling them. It's not like they've. They're selling anything. them for like twenty bucks now, and the Steam link is like twenty bucks. I know from but the original been, it, fifty bucks. It's been that for a while. Like I'm saying, we don't. I would love to know whether or not it sold well or not, but they keep putting it on sale every time. Like Valve has just abandoned plenty of things, and they don't seem to have abandoned this. So I like they must be selling them at least okay. Or they have a lot of stock they want to burn through. <laughs> Jeremiah, when you were talking about resolution, uh, the yeah. Wii U gamepad is at was at eight fifty four by four eighty. So what is that? What's the difference between seven twenty p and that? Like I'm trying. Uh, seven twenty p is okay, twelve eighty oh, by right, seven twenty. Yeah. Okay, so seven twenty p would be like forty percent more, oh, like forty or fifty percent more pixels. Wow, than that and that's and the, nice and screen. the contrast was pretty low. And, and you know oh, what's yeah. pitiful? 720p still isn't even a good considered to be a good resolution for like a standard tablet like that's not yeah. even good you know yeah. for a tablet you're gonna like read and stuff on you want like 1080p so this is even like a low resolution tablet and it's still that much higher than the wii u pad i the have resolution no problem for the i have Vita. no problem reading on my original ipad mini and it's not high resolution like no my, my first ipad was 1024 by 768 and it was okay but as soon as i got one my nexus 7 that's um 1080p huge difference i mean like it, it is night and day i'm my kindle fire has is uh 1280 by 800 and it's fine like i can totally read on it but if i was going to be doing more stuff with it i think i'd be higher res <laughs> the playstation vita was 960 by 540 544 that was a really nice the vita had screen, a really actually. good screen that was yeah, the, the push for that and it was a bit smaller too wasn't it like uh the switch yeah, it was, was a six uh, inch it was a screen. five inch Okay, so yeah, that was, I mean that's about proportional. Yeah, that's gonna look, that's gonna be a really nice screen. So my my point with the um the price stuff is to me it's I don't think three hundred dollars I think three hundred dollars is a great price point to hit. My concern is that it's a little bit like the PSVR in that if you want to have like the cur the best experience, you're probably gonna need to spend a bit more than the quoted base price. Like with PSVR, if you want to really have a good experience. Like, well, you have to have the camera and then you should get like some move controllers as well. So you're looking at about $500 unless you can get it on the sale. And then with this, it sounds like depending on what you want to do with multiplayer and depending on whether or not you want a pro controller, like you could easily spend another hundred bucks on this between like an SD card controllers, something else. So I, you know, I don't think not it's a actually system the same. You, can't, you can get away from that. Maybe you're spending $70 instead of a hundred, but yeah. If you buy a PS4 or an Xbox One, you need to buy an extra controller. 
at least with I the don't. Switch, if you want to, you're talking about having the correct oh. experience. So you're comparing this. If you want to compare apples to apples, well, the, to get that not, it's not apples to apples because Nintendo Nintendo has a lot more a lot bigger focus on like couch co op and multiplayer and stuff. Right, but what you can do with the do what you can do with the Joy Cons, you can yeah. The the the, the couch co op is built on the, the I Joy-Cons. guess I guess where it is I'm skeptical, I'm skeptical of how supported all these different methods of controlling are going to be on all the different games and if to have their correct experience or i mean correct to have the best experience are you going to need to buy the full-size controllers or have more controllers or whatever i guess i'm just skeptical i i think it would be incredible if they could deliver their full game experiences on just like one joy con per person for multiplayer stuff i just don't see how I, I think you're going to see games like 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 mario side scrollers or ukulele things like that like ukulele there was a video today that they announced a whole bunch of multiplayer stuff in it that looks like it's just gonna be script uh split screen for four players i'm like that's gonna be fun on the nintendo switch just to here's a controller let's play some like mini games or whatever i think if you play something like splatoon which i'm not sure if it does have split screen because i never played the first one or anything but the, if that the original screen, you played one on the console and one on the pad so gotcha yeah did you need to which which create one? which creates some in, some equity problems yeah. between two kids <laughs> <laughs> i think the big the biggest connection to like what you're talking about the psvr is that i wish they were able to include one mini game like we motion sports or that yeah. arms game because uh, that actually looks actually a lot of fun i was actually watching some more gameplay i'm like that actually looks like like really well made um but that that kind of sucks that or the one two switch like it looks like it's gonna be fun to just try it out and just to you know play around with it you know check out the controllers and everything and just learn what the system can do. And so I think they were very, very extremely trying to keep the price down as much as possible. Oh, yeah. And so I think they just couldn't do it. Um, but I have a feeling within probably a year and a half, they'll have a bundle that already has a game kind of oh, like I'm the sure. Wii U with Mario and stuff like that. So I, I, I agree with that, Christmas. but I don't by think Christ- about the controllers. I don't, really? I, cause when I saw that charger thing and I was like, I don't really picture myself taking this everywhere where it's going to be too far away where I got to charge it while I'm upstairs. Um, so again, if, if, what they say is not true and like the controllers die within you know an hour then i'm like oh i gotta have to charge it all the time then i could see that but right now i couldn't see anything because for me any game that joy might play will probably just be like mario games or things like that where i don't think it's gonna need to use the dual sticks um so uh, for me i think for the first even year i don't think i'm gonna need to get any more controllers unless it's like oh man i really want to get someone to play with more people but just out of the box. I think it's, I think it's a really good uh, quality and they have enough in it. So uh, we'll see. Uh, but we, yeah, uh, let's talk uh, about some of the other features. Sure. Cause uh, we didn't hit a lot of them. <laughs> um, the wireless multiplayer, I thought was pretty cool. Up to eight different consoles can connect to each other. That's nice. Yep. Um, which kind of takes it back to, it's like a wireless LAN party. Almost. If you, you know, if you, you and friends can sit and play in the same room, I would like to see what Nintendo can do with party games with that. Because like we had a lot of fun at the yep. beach playing... Oh, I don't remember what the game was called. We passed around the, the gamepad yeah. a lot. I don't remember. Yeah. But I, I see like I, there's a lot of potential like with Nintendo to come up with really cool things like that. And I think that could be fun. I mean, I'm, I'm down mm-hmm. to see what they do with it. I couldn't help but think, man, it'd be awesome if they actually port like something like Gwent or something on it. Like playing on the big screen. Then like, oh, I'm going to go upstairs and use it like a tablet. I think oh, yeah, that would be like, awesome. I would, I would really enjoy that, just having it on the go, that would knowing that attention. I have the exact same experience. I think that's cool, just knowing it's not like here's a lower, you know, ported version of the same game, like you'd see maybe like like NBA on you know the Vita versus NBA on the 3DS is totally two different types of games, or you know, um, but this was like, oh, that's actually really cool. Like just to think, like I know they probably couldn't do it, but like if witcher was on that sweet i'm playing for a bunch of couple hours and then i just pull it out oh, i'm just gonna take it with me and play upstairs while i'm rendering something i just think it'd be cool the uh the, the we talked about rumble but they talked about a very specific feature of the rumble and that's sensitivity mm-hmm. and not just like on off or various degrees of it but feeling from what i got from it is almost feeling like location-based rumbling mm-hmm. so i don't know if they have multiple uh things inside to cause it to rumble, which I, I thought was pretty interesting. I think that's something that we could see in the future for like VR, mm-hmm. you know, if yeah. you you could add multiple sensors inside of a, you know, something that you're grabbing with and feel 
uh, I think that would take the experience to a new level. Yeah, definitely. I don't know if the IR thing is going to be a big thing, but I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what what they do with it. Yeah, because that's again, like it with even with like the Wii Motion Plus when they came out with the legit Nintendo version of it, they did it fantastic from the sword fighting to frisbee, like all these really cool. They did it really, really well. But again, the third party people, they were not even close. <laughs> And that's well, still a worry with this, honestly. I mean, it, they they talk a lot about the people they've got lined up for third party support, but are you guys at all worried about how few games they actually announced? A little bit. Um, at the same time, I know how many own, games I own now for the Wii U, and now I don't. I don't see it as a regret of a purchase. Hmm. Um, I have a, as many physical games on the Wii U as I do the Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Um. And I have kids, and they love the Wii U. Um, just because of the game experiences that they create, specific, you know, f- from Nintendo. So even if third party is not a big thing, I know that they'll get the money's worth out of that. But being able to take it in the car, and then to be able to play something on a trip, I... sold. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm a little nervous for third party. Um, it's to me, I'm my. my I have like a really low like I just want at least three really good Nintendo games a year or something that I would want to play on it. That would be more than enough for me to justify the purchase of it because there's three amazing games coming out this year that I'm excited. It's Zelda, the Mario game and Ukulele's coming out on it. Those they're like they all feel like perfect Mario like, you know, platform type games I would enjoy playing on on Nintendo and just being able to play it on the go or wherever I want. That's really cool. But outside of that, I have no idea what they're going to do. I really hope they change things around. I'm ex- like, I was talking with joy the other night. We were saying since they are slowly moving away from the 3ds and stuff, now they're going to keep supporting it for quite a while because it's doing well, but it would be awesome to see like professor Layton games. Those were like amazing games on the 3ds. We bought all six of them. It'd be cool to see games like that. Come on that where joy can be playing on the tablet or whatever, or play on the big screen as we play together. Those, so that would add another four, like a four, that's a fourth game in a year for that, that console for me. And that to me, that's getting to the amount that I'm like, that's pretty awesome. Cause again, there's already so many games on PS4 and PC that we're all playing that like, I don't need to have a lot of games. It's more of just, I want at least like at least two to three Nintendo official games on it because I, I do miss playing Nintendo games, but for me, one random Pokemon game plus one Mario game. I'm only going to play the Mario game. I'm not playing Pokemon. So Pokemon one a year bad, was but. one a year is very slim, and especially having had a Wii U that had no Zelda games for the entire time except for remakes. Come on, like, ah, like that. That's rough for a fan. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm skeptical just because it's Nintendo. I mean. <laughs> I want them to do well, but at the same time, like, how many chances do you give them? Like, they swing for the fences so much, it seems like, but then if they don't, if it doesn't turn out to be a home run and it drops just inside the fence, they kind of go, oh, well, we'll slow down. And you say, like, only three amazing games per year. Have you been getting three amazing games per year on your Wii U? I mean, um, you, you sold your Wii U. When I got it, now, and James, it, he helped me kind of spread out the list because I kind of forgot how many games I did get on it. It wasn't a ton for the four years, whatever they had it. And I had it kind of, because I got one early on, then I sold it. But it was it, at least in the double digits. One, yeah. It wasn't like yeah. you were thinking you maybe bought like a couple yeah, yeah. Of games. But overall, the four years, it was basically about two a year. So for me, it's like, again, it wasn't, it wasn't horrible. It was just like the amount, like all their games that come out are amazing. It was just that it's only like, two out of the six that they come out a year that like from Nintendo that I'm only interested in. So I'm like, eh, it sucks. Cause I mean, they're really good games, but I'm just not interested in those. Mm-hmm. But I think this time around outside of game wise, they made, I think they've made a really good system. And I think they have a really good idea of like for, for a console, really, really good idea that no one else has really kind of done really well yet. So, and I think it's just really different and it could do really well. I just hope, because it's almost like a handheld too, they're going to start bringing all of those handheld games, starting to bring that into one. So essentially, we could be getting twice the amount of games on it down the road. I, I think that I don't think the excitement was there for the Wii U. I know it wasn't there for me, but obviously, looking at sales, it wasn't there. I think there's a little more hype this time, even without a bunch of third-party announcements. 
and I think that's going to at least help get some more people on board that might have been a little afraid to. I know that GameStop has sold out of all their pre-orders, which I think is a good thing. Um, nice. They had more pre-orders than the NES Classic Edition available, which <laughs> I think is bizarre because those are the cheapest things to make. It's just basically but no one's going to want one of those. Free, free money for them. But, um... Uh. I'm in the weird. The, go ahead. I, I was just gonna. I I don't have a whole lot to say about it because I'm in the weird position of uh, being out of the Nintendo world for so long. The last console before my PS4 was a GameCube, so I was you know up to speed with N Nintendo for maybe like through 2004, maybe. Um, but even then, for the GameCube, I missed out on a lot of the Nintendo classics. I think I had like Mario Party, uh, Mario Kart. Didn't do any of the Zelda games for GameCube. Uh, the only Zelda game to this day that I have actually played all the way through is Link to the Past <laughs> on the SNES. So That's a good one, at least. Yeah, yeah. I just... Yeah, I, I don't really see myself buying an entire console for what I'm sure are going to be some really great Nintendo games. I Am I like in a post-Nintendo era for me, I wonder? Like it's I, it's been a long time. It's been a really long time. I honestly think I am because outside of like playing it at a couple parties or something, if Joel gets one, I I just am not like excited by a new Mario or a new Mario Party or a new Mario Kart. Like I've played most of them. I just to me it doesn't feel like it's worth waiting a couple years to get them because they're not really that different from the stuff before them, and I could just as easily go back and play the old stuff. I know I don't play nearly as many Nintendo games as like Joel and James do, but for their mainline games that I do play, I don't really feel like I'm getting a much different experience than I got last time. And Mario is always fun, but to me, it's there. Like Dave said, there's no real compelling reason for me to buy this system to play the Mario games and stuff. They're going to be on it. It just doesn't really do it for me. And maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe you're not though. necessarily the, the focus. Yeah. And that's fine. And, and I mean, I, I say that, um, I say that in that I imagine elementary and middle school kids who can go over and spend the night at their friend's house and take their system with them and play at a friend's house could be a big thing. Um, I, that, that's something we as adults aren't just like, dude, I want to come over and let's sit on a couch together and play games, a, a game ac sitting across from each other. As a, you know, sometimes we'll play together in a room, but, you know, as adults, if we play something, we usually play it online with each other. Mm -hmm. That's something I think kids, you know, they still have sleepovers. They can take it with them on trips and stuff like that. I, I still think there's a big enough market in that to where they could make enough money for this to be a lot more successful than the Wii U. Um, I don't know that it's already more successful out of the gate, but I think there's... Hard I think, to tell. I think, They've I think, only offered 500 units for pre-order, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I know the store that I pre-ordered from offered 40. Well, and that's if, more than I expected, that, honestly. And yes. and they they had it printed on the window. Mm -hmm. And if they've sold out, and I, I don't know how many GameStop stores are, but a lot of retailers are selling out now, and they're already now hitting eBay, that's a good sign for at least a, a reasonable launch for them. So. Yeah. I, I can't always think I would, like... It's one of those kind of dream scenarios but like i would love like let's say if we all had one of these right like let's just say it had something like or like some cool nintendo like age of umpires game or something like that just chilling that easy to like sync up you know don't have to sit on a desk with a laptop you know what i mean like that portable i think would be such a fun experience to have games like that or to play hey let's play mario party you know what i mean let's all play mario T party together or something like that i do hope they do this that they had on the 3ds for Mario Party on the 3DS, one of the coolest features that Nintendo, I think, has ever done when it comes to, like, just giving away free games, essentially, was you could play with eight other people on Nintendo 3DSs. If no one had the game, I could just host my game. It would download to all of the 3DSs what it needed, and we could play the entire game. No one needed to have the game except for one person. I thought that was awesome. I could It'd see be like being I, a really cool feature. That would be amazing, because, like I mean... It'd be like saying, hey, let's play Age of Empires. Oh, no one else? Don't worry about it. I'll host it. It just downloads to your computer and we can play. And then when we're done, it just deletes itself or whatever. But that would be really cool to see on this because I think in a way it's very much like a 3DS having it. 
And I think that would it would suck if they, you know, you everyone had I could see games for maybe like Splatoon or something like that, but maybe certain like party type games, specifically like Mario Party or something like that would be so cool. Who knows if they'll do it, even if they'll allow a demo or something like that. But I thought that was such a cool feature on the 3DS. And I think some of the unpredictables that, you know, we still need to find out about is they've mentioned the online service, but we don't know much about it. Yeah. They have mentioned that they're going to basically retrofit some of the older games to play online with other people, which I think is really cool. There are some less than reputable ways to do that now, but it's cool to have an official way to play some of the old games online with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, as long as they I deliver value I'm, that's my only concern with that is if they're going to actually pump out enough content and do enough that it's worth whatever you pay I mean if you pay a dollar a right. month the expectations are low but I, I hope they have a good plan for that and a good plan for extended support for that because people got a lot more critical of Sony's online service once they started charging for it and Microsoft kind of had it from the get go but if they want to charge for it, like that's all well and good. And like, if they need to charge money to make it good, charge money. I mean, they're, that's totally their right to do it. But I, I hope they've got a good plan for that. And the other, the other thing is, we don't know where they're going to go with their next handheld console. Like, hmm. d d if they could find a way to integrate that with the Switch, I think that would help the ecosystem. If they could find a way to, I mean, they've tried to do it in the past with like the Game Boy Advances working with the GameCube little bit of interactivity between that but if they can find a way for them to all actually play together so someone even if you don't all have the switches but you have you know a smaller handheld can all play together mm -hmm. i think i think that would really help uh boost sales overall you guys have any other thoughts before we move on with the show nope. i hope i like uh, my nope. neon color <laughs> i got the gray one the, the reason I did it is because they only had a limited amount, and that literally was what everybody was pushing for, and that's the collectible version. So, we'll see. <laughs> you open it, tear. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's so bright. <laughs> I got a hey, switch, Joel, but I will that, not uh, take it in public. <laughs> how's that rose gold iPhone treating you, Joel? Treat me just fine. So It's been a great talking piece. Talk of the town. <laughs> Talk of the town. You heard it here first. <laughs> it's now time for what are you playing this week? A part of the show where we talk about what we're playing this week. And other than just a tiny bit of Battlefield, tiny bit of Arma, and tiny bit of GTA with the group, I haven't played anything. So, Joel, what have you been playing? Uh, I've just been playing. I played a little bit of Battlefield with Dave. That's about it. I, I loaned uh, Ben my PS4 Pro you, to play through Last Guardian. You played with me, too, on Battlefield. But what you I'm, left sorry. after one match, Jeremiah. You don't even count. Like three matches, <laughs> like two ma two matches. I two played. Matches. I think. I think I played twice with Dave uh, oh, okay. this week. That was about it. Um, and and I put playing the waiting game. I'm like really excited for the Nintendo Switch. So I'm just I'm, I'm excited for it. Wow. But I gave I gave Ben the PS4. He just finished the game, and I'm I'm so busy this weekend. I'm just gonna give Eric the PS4 to. To, to play last card he's just gonna play it through the whole weekend he'll probably beat it in one day uh just wait till you have a portable console i know Ooh, i wonder <laughs> when you beat that. your one game and give it out to everybody <laughs> <laughs> dave dave doesn't have to buy a nintendo console because joel can just carry it to his house <laughs> perfect that, that's about it dave what about you uh, since the last podcast, uh, I played some Skyrim with it snowing outside. I hadn't touched it since the first hour of the intro. And, uh, you know, the snowy atmosphere out the window was what I needed to immerse myself once again. It just felt and right. <laughs> you needed a it, boost. <laughs> it did. It did. I needed a boost. And I'm happy to say that while last time I talked about how, um, like, I was honestly so bored doing the intro again. Um, I did the little uh, one dungeon next to River Run in Skyrim where you go after you have the dragon hand. Um, I did that entire dungeon, did some looting, spiked up my character a bit, and I'm happy to say that I did have fun until I started to get bored right at the end, and I realized, like, it's still a good game, but I'm like, man, I really did do everything in this game, because I caught myself, <laughs> I was looting every corpse, I, I remembered every bit of that dungeon, every corner, every trap, I remembered every <laughs> bit of it, nothing surprised me, like, at all, oh my gosh. and then I caught myself, like, looting all the corpses, or, like, in all the, all the shelves in the dungeon, I was like, wait, like, I did this for 200 hours in 2012, 
I think it's just time to put it aside. Like, I did everything. I loved it. It was great. <laughs> it's not a bad game, thankfully. Like, I was worried after playing the intro. I'm like, did I, was I just wrong? Is it just bad? It's like, no, I just, I just did it all the first time, which is, that's fine. But I will <laughs> I say wish that, we, I wish we could compare a, a looting heat map, me and you. <laughs> I feel like it would be so similar. Like, literally go on to each, because I, I do the same thing. I'll look in each body, make sure they don't have anything. Every urn, like the little like shelf, like slide animation, just slide urn, uh, yeah. empty. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm glad I played in this now, and that it's it's not that it's bad. It's just it's just me. I done done it all. <laughs> um, I also beat Mafia Three, and uh, I'm very glad that I waited for some patches to fix some of the weird visual stuff going on. But I'm also very glad that I went back to it. That game is a very solid seven out of ten. A very enjoyable story, some fun twist at the end. And an incredible soundtrack. I was uh, bragging to Jeremiah that no, they did not use Fortunate Son every every other song. They used some really <laughs> obscure uh, bits of the soundtrack and some like regional songs too, like about the bayou and, and stuff like that in the like Louisiana area. Um, really, really fun game. It took me 46 hours to beat it, it in total. I did all but a couple of side missions for some of the, um, the under bosses. Some of the side missions were like, steal this car. Now steal three of them. Now, so three of this kind of car. And I was like, all right, nope. <laughs> and finally, uh, Battlefield 1 had a new game mode released this week. Uh, back to basics. Um, a, a rifles only mode with no vehicles. Tons of fun. Some of the most fun I've had on the ground in Battlefield 1 since it released. And DICE just had a poll this week. Announced that they're going to keep it as part of the game long term. The back I, to basics is sticking around. Yeah, I, I don't know why they would have pulled it out, though. Like, have they ever really done that before? Yeah, they've released a new, like, quick match game type option like, every two weeks since the game came out. Most oh. of them have been pretty bad. Like, one of them was called, gosh, what was it? It was, like, Charge Forward, and you could only spawn in as uh, scouts and medics, and you had, like, extra health. And it, like, like, a lot of them just seemed like they were just throwing darts at a board, like, all right, 200% health, syringes only. This one finally, it felt like an actual, like, well thought out, like, World War One rifles, bolt action only game mode. And uh, it was extremely popular for once. Nice. James, what about you? I played some more Skyrim. I think mm -hmm. this is the most I've put into Skyrim. So it may, maybe it'll actually catch this time. <laughs> <laughs> so I played, I played Skyrim... I mean, um, I played Oblivion after I played, um, actually, I think I tried it before Fallout. That's yeah. right. I tried it before Fallout. Couldn't get into it. Played Fallout, loved Fallout 3, and then went back and played Oblivion and loved it. So this has been <laughs> Fallout 4 is in the game that makes me go back and play the game that came out before it. So you might just skip. <laughs> don't even buy Elder Scrolls 6, James. I will. I'm just going to wait till the next Fallout. Play Fallout, then go back. <laughs> Um, oh man! <laughs> I uh, finished the Nuka Cold Nuka World for Fallout. Oh, nice! I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed it because the exploration felt more like Fallout Three in New Vegas than mm. this one. I, I enjoyed Fallout Four, but the, to me, the city was a little too overwhelming. Like it was just you just there was just too many buildings to go into, and it just none of it was really that interesting. But this gave yeah. you just this. This was very interesting architecture, and finding loot was really fun. So I enjoyed it. You know, James mentioning the city. I've been trying to think over why I felt that way too. I think you're you're on to something. It's it's a lot of it's the same. It's there's no like hero buildings for the most part. There's there's a few, but like they're pretty spread out. So it's very similar alleyways. It's really crammed together. And it's also nonstop fighting generic enemies. Yeah. Like there's no like, OK, rest. Oh, cool. New discovery. It's the same streets. And you have to shoot your way through 30 enemies every block. It's like tedious. See, the thing yeah. I, I, the thing I didn't like about Fallout 3 was the main city. Yeah. Like yeah. I hated doing that area. Like it just wasn't that fun to me. It was cool seeing some of the museums and stuff. But most of the enjoyment I got out of Fallout 3 was going to the western, northern, and just the far east part of the map. I think it has to do with like actually having to travel a little bit of a distance. And so when you finally get to a town, you're excited to like... You see something explore. on the horizon. You're like, oh, yeah, cool, yeah. what's that? And I think that's why I think New Vegas was probably my favorite. Just because it was like, I don't know. I like going through the desert for a while and finding something. Yeah, but I had the same. Because going through the, the towns in Fallout 4, it was so impressive the first time. 
But then I got so overwhelmed of like, did I miss this? Did I miss that? It just felt so overwhelming to try to like explore it all that I couldn't, you can't do it all in one session as opposed to a smaller town where you can just kind of go in, go into every house, talk with everybody and you've done it. This is like, I can't do this. This is going to be like a several days worth of exploring. And it was just to me, it was just like, oh, I don't know. I just turned me off. I hated the blood. <laughs> I hated the blood gulch area of Nuka World, though, where all the like, little larvae are jumping out at you. Oh, <laughs> so this is disgusting. I had so <laughs> many nukes. I just shot nukes into it. <laughs> That's what I would do in real life. I just like to screw that part of the map. <laughs> um, and I bought Firewatch on the like the end of the steam sale i debated so much whether i was going to buy it for 12 bucks for like a you know four or five hour experience um but i really enjoyed it um i hear a lot of people complain about the ending um they finished the damn game i'm so going to talk to we're, you about it we're making plans we're just going to play it in here on the couch See, I have a but couch there was there was something that, there was something that bugged me about the story and reading online what you know people theorized about the story um, made a lot more sense and it made the ending more satisfying to me. So I enjoyed it. It was, it was worth my, it was worth the 12 bucks. Cool. It's now time for the news. It was time. Up first, HDR has become a giant buzzword this fall with the release of the Xbox or last fall with the Xbox one S, which supported HDR video streaming and 4K video streaming, um, the PS4 Pro and the PS4 getting support for HDR gaming and 4K TVs using HDR as a big buzzword. Now, it's not quite as rosy as it sounds because to actually enjoy HDR content properly, everything in your chain has to support HDR, support that much bandwidth, and uh, you need you can't get a super cheap TV. There are plenty of TVs that have. Your eyes support, don't even support HDR naturally. Oh, gosh. That support <laughs> HDR signal. Um, they can accept the signal, but they can't actually display a color gamut that's that wide. So you're not actually seeing the extra detail. In stores, they just bump up the saturation and contrast a bunch. So people go, oh, I guess this looks look better. Like, this looks better. Like, it's the same garbage that stores have always done to try to sell TVs. So to actually get, like, the real HDR experience, you have to, play, you have to pay more money. Um, and I've always thought it would be nice... Or I'd always thought, like ever since HDR was announced for TVs, I thought computer monitors would be a good fit for that because most nice computer monitors have much nicer quality panels than TVs. And there's the potential to have a really, really nice HDR display. Well, FreeSync is AMD's version of G-Sync, and it is an open source that only AMD has adopted because there's only AMD and NVIDIA actually doing stuff like this. So it's AMD's open source version of G-Sync. Uh, it, it supports var variable refresh rate monitors, and they are coming out with a FreeSync 2 standard, which can coexist alongside FreeSync. So it's not like you have to replace FreeSync monitors with FreeSync 2, but FreeSync 2 uh, will support HDR displays. So for something to be uh, FreeSync 2 certified, it would have to support a minimum... Uh, it'd have to reach a minimum threshold of maximum brightness and color gamut and a few other things. So you can actually display a decent signal. And then it also will increase the FreeSync range. Now, G-Sync will adjust the refresh rate of your screen for any FPS up to the maximum refresh rate of the screen. FreeSync does have a limitation. It works within a range. So maybe it's 40 hertz to 75 hertz or something like that. So they've also introduced this uh, the same thing that G-Sync has. I don't think this is just for FreeSync 2. I think it came out with our latest version of the Radian Crimson stuff. Uh, it's called LFC, which is where if the FPS drops low enough that FreeSync is going to turn off, it doubles the amount of frames that are actually being sent to the screen so it thinks it's still fine and it keeps it within the range, which is actually pretty cool. Um, but that's only compatible with a handful of FreeSync monitors because they have to have a... They, their refresh rate has to be big enough. Like, you buy a 60 hertz FreeSync monitor, it can't do that. It has to be, like, 120 hertz, 144 hertz. So with FreeSync 2, monitor manufacturers have to support LFC. Uh, and let's see. Um, the game engine will be connected directly to the HDR display. So it stuff won't have to be tone mapped again. You won't like introduce as much latency as before. So short version, HDR gaming, in a sense, is officially debuting a couple months behind consoles. And we have yet to see how much this will catch on 
much like consoles, a lot of the stuff that's out now, like there's a couple really cool things and a lot of it's okay. And most people <laughs> won't be able to see the difference. And most people don't even calibrate their TVs or monitors. So, yeah, I mean, some of this stuff is kind of like, what's the point, but it's cool that we're getting the option. Uh, it'd be really awesome if we could like stream Netflix in 4k, if people could get the DRM garbage sorted out, I didn't need a brand new Intel CPU, but whatever. <laughs> All I'm saying is that is still my favorite news that I'm like, oh, you want the newest, best Netflix? Well, you got to change CPUs. My <laughs> smart like, TV what? can do it. My consoles can do it. Anyway, a rant for a different day. Dave, oh, what man. news do you have for us this week? I want to say, say in that I hope that they start announcing more cards soon from AMD. Oh, yeah. The Vega cards to, to, yeah. to match this. This. Oh, no, no. The last couple generations of cards for uh, both manufacturers can support HDR. Right, but this would be a good time in by, buying be. a new monitor to go ahead and buy your system. That's true. Mm. It would be, yeah. What was the tagline, Jeremiah, that I used for the tech podcast? Was it upgrade unnecessarily? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Dave, yeah. speaking of which, have we talked on this podcast about our, our G-Sync monitors? All right, I'll should, stop. Should be. <laughs> no, probably not. Because they're pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, so for my news this week, I've got um, a chunk of a tech article actually about the massive uh, DDoS attack last year. You guys, I'm sure, remember when it took down a piece of the internet backbone and, like, Reddit went down, Twitter, Facebook, and the internet was just, like, slow for an entire day if you were on the East Coast last year. Mm -hmm. So the software that made that attack possible, it was an attack by uh, what's called the Internet of Things. So uh, a denial of service attack from traffic coming from things like unsecured webcams, security cameras, toasters, whatever crap they've thrown a Wi-Fi adapter into that doesn't actually need it, that has no security updates ever. Millions of these devices were used in these attacks to bring down the uh, this chunk of the Internet backbone. But where uh, gaming ties in is apparently this software that was used to put this bot network together for this DDoS attack it originated from a couple of different groups fighting over profits from Minecraft servers. And this goes <laughs> a few levels deep, okay? So this, this this DDoS attack that started, that ended with taking out a chunk of the internet for a day, it began because some Minecraft servers, according to this article on PC Gamer, they can bring in, bring in about uh, $50,000 a month of revenue from donators who pay for like a plot of land or upgrades or whatever else. Well, because these servers are worth so much money, they're a target for attack from people who maybe get banned or want their server to be the popular one. So there's then services uh, that sell DDoS protection for your Minecraft server. Well, it goes further than that. There's multiple different com uh, companies that specialize in DDoS protection of Minecraft servers. And this DDoS software originated because a couple of these different companies protecting these valuable Minecraft servers would attack servers under the protection of the other company, try to get their customers to get angry and join their protection company. I mean, this is Buccaneers. This is basically like Buccaneers <laughs> of the high Minecraft seas. Yeah. So it's like, like it's we're not like, pirates. We're not pirates. We work for, uh, we work for the crown. It's okay. <laughs> Just... I find that really, really funny that it wasn't just like, I want my Minecraft server to be more popular than your popular server. It's, I want you to pay for my company's protection, so I'm going to illegally attack the company that's protecting your server. And then that leads to this software getting more and more popular. It went open source and eventually was used to take out a piece of the internet last year in 2016, but it began with the Minecraft server war. As always, Dave, it is not enough that I should be good. Others must fall. <laughs> and that's pretty much the internet. Yeah. Uh, idiots. Joel's disgusted with all of this, I can tell. <laughs> Joel, uh, what, what, uh, what news items do you have for us? We'll start with the less exciting one. And uh, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild will be Nintendo's last game for the Wii U. So there'll be no more Nintendo games from, from them coming out. So... Yeah, okay. makes, I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> they but, did the same thing with the GameCube. Yep. For, it was, the Nintendo Wii U, I think, is f just a little over four years, I think, right? Or four and a half, maybe? Man, that went fast. Um, 
Not very but, fast if you're a Wii U owner. <laughs> just dragged on uh, and on. <laughs> <laughs> Crawling through the desert. Please. <laughs> just a game. <laughs> please, Zelda. Please. Metroid. No. <laughs> no. What's, what's Metroid Buddies. Oh, whatever the crap it was called. Gosh, that was a slap in the face. What, what was I called, James? Metroid Heroes or something? No, oh, it was man. Uh, shoot. It was, it, it was, it's like, to me, it was like, the equivalent of going to Toys R Us to the baby aisle and seeing like fire truck or like, or GI Joe's, but the baby versions of them, it was like, Hey, you like Metroid? You know, all those hardcore people that have been with us, Nintendo from the very start. Yeah. I think, cause I think little kids are going to enjoy Metroid. No kids don't care what the crap it is. They just want a good game. <laughs> I've been following you for a long time. This Federation so force. Uh, oh, that ball, geez. that like ball thing. You shoot around. <laughs> Oh gosh, they were so excited about the two. Introducing Metroid for children. Uh, Joel, <laughs> all I have to say is Cranky Kong to watch your face cringe. <laughs> okay, so this is amazing news. So after Thursday's workout, I was at workout and I get in the car and I was like, oh yeah, it's time. So I go check the Reddit AMA but none other than Gabe Newell was doing a AMA and answering questions. Which stands so that, for? I don't actually even know. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me anything. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways. <laughs> Joel's just like, AMA? I don't know what that is, but Gabe Newell, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, it was him and a, a bunch of other uh, developers at Valve. So people were just asking them questions and stuff. Well, oh man, just prior to this, a week or so ago, there was a article that came out on GameStop, or GameSpot, not GameStop, um, about this guy who was trying Powered to get... players. Yeah, proud of players. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to get some really good article or interviews, anything about Half-Life related, for a couple of years, and he decided, all right, I'm just going to release it, but he's like, he felt bad about it just because he's like, I don't want to fan the flame as well on rumors. So and he said, just take it with a grain of salt. This could be true or not. I only have one source. So I don't have anything else to collaborate. But it was fascinating. And honestly, the article made a lot of sense, like just from what they've been doing. I was like, oh, that's whatever. All right. I guess in a way it was kind of nice to have closure. a little bit. It was, closure. It was, little, it was yeah. nice to have a little bit of closure. Like, all right, at least something, even though I was a little angry with it. Like, Couldn't they have just said that? But whatever. Well, out of nowhere, and I think because of that, I think because of that, he was at least, he was, because I guess Dave said someone else started it, said, hey, would you, you know, do an AMA unless, and he said yes. So I think he did say yes because of the recent week, because everyone was kind of freaking yeah. out about that. Well, someone asked him specifically, um, where is it? Where is it? I have it here. Come on, load. There we go. He said, someone says, any chance of a new IP that takes place in the Half-Life Portal universe? I feel like there's a lot of story left to be explored there. Thanks. Gabe just replies with one delicious word. Yep. And I feel like unless they're literally the douchebags of the world, <laughs> him saying something like yep would be incredibly tormenting if it was just like, oh yeah, we can maybe do something with it if it was that. I have a feeling... I, it's to me like I don't know if they're making Half-Life 3 um, but then uh, I forgot the, he did say a follow-up saying we have something we're working on you know we have other games being worked on and we like to communicate through our games so if they have some stuff in the works mm. it might not be Half-Life 3 it might not be Portal it could be something where they're almost combined because I, I mean like if you play the last two games, their worlds are actually connecting. I feel very like we, much we've, to them. we've crossed over yeah. into the the pie in the sky field of dreams category. Yeah, I mean, this, I mean, this, this is, I mean, again, but if they said you something play a left within for the dead universe, level. if they said something within the universe, who knows what that could be? But I'm just saying, at the end of Half Life Two, Episode Two, they're connecting, going to the ship Portal Two. There's this ship in it. There's, so it would be awesome if they did that or at least something. But to me, it at least made me really happy that someone just finally freaking just said something to just say, yeah, we're, we're working on something. We can't tell you what, but we are actually working on something. Now, like that's, that's all yeah. I needed. Like you don't have to tell me all the details, but it's like, sweet. Is Valve actually making games still? Please. Are they going to make a game? It's been a, a freaking long time since they've released an actual game. 
was about to ask Joel, is this the first official word we've had about Half-Life since like 2008? Has it been yes. nine years? Yes. Like even just, we haven't even gotten a no, just a no comment since 2009. Yep, nothing. Yeah. The closest we got was... You've got actually, some, vague, you've some vague answers over the years. Not about, from them though. Not from them. No, nothing yeah, like yeah, official. Couple, well, they've said that it's it's something that they're still considering working on, but they've got other priorities, basically. <laughs> I guess all the thing I can remember is saying... If they basically said if that's something they're, the people are interested in developing. They've yeah, said yeah, stuff maybe. like that, so it's not like they've just literally just not said a word. But this is the first, like, affirmative yeah. move. First real like, anything first... that we can, like, take to the bank. Yeah, because they'll, they'll say, like, hey, you gonna make Ricochet 2? And he's like, oh, we're definitely working on Ricochet 2. Like, there's a lot of just, like... What are you talking about? Can you say anything? The only time that someone ever got kind of close was he was in this, uh, it was in a, he was doing a speech for some college class. And I think about gaming a long time ago, there's like 2009 or 10. And he said, like, he kind of made a slip up and it was mentioning and it was like, Ooh, what's that? You know? But so yeah, that was, honestly, I don't know how to feel. Cause it was like, I, I had just buried, I had just buried. That was funny week. because you just saw the IGN article. Uh, about how it's just never going to happen, and you were yeah. like, you know what, I, you, it, it, it isn't. I think yeah. I think you would finally. He had some part of him will always believe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but he like, was at the he was at the end of his. No, the bad the bad thing stage. that happened is the last guardian actually came out, so some part of Joel will always think there's a chance. There's well, okay. a chance. Let, let me be let, let me be really clear in this. I I. I put I kind of buried the fact that Gabe and the team that was working on the original games, they're not doing it. I don't think they're just going, hey, we'll never make one again. I think it's always a possibility someone in their team could just make something else in the Half-Life universe or whatever. Kind of like what they were saying. But one of the guys to me, what was sad. Battle, Battlefront group. What's that? One of the yeah. guys who made Portal just went over to Battlefront group. Yeah. So I think to me, like to me, what made the Half-Life games awesome was knowing the team because like Gabe was like such a cool inspiration in gaming for me because it was like someone on the edge trying to do something so ridiculous with steam and the physics. It was just like it was such a cool it, new experience that to me, like I want like I, that's what I was hoping for with with Half-Life 3 or just another game that they're going to continue to push the boundaries of gaming, not just to only be running steam and, you know. <laughs> continue support for team Fortress skins 2 and all for that stuff. CSGO. Yeah. But then again, I, if, I, if I became a billionaire just selling digital games in a marketplace where other people had to make them, I don't know. I'd be pretty tempted to just keep that going too. What well, <laughs> would you, I, but, but, I would be bored but, out of my mind. I think me too. Like for a, me, well, like I would go get different yeah. hobbies. I mean, I, yeah. I would like <laughs> to me. I, I just, I don't, I don't think any there. amount of money could stop me from like wanting to make more films or just be creative or do something. So <laughs> to me, it was like of money. I'm serious. Any, Any amount. No, Joel, no if amount. you get enough money where you can start doing Joel's crazy schemes you've been talking about for years, you're like, Joel, this is enough money. That's you something actually... creative. That's something creative. But, but, but okay. you think, like, you think, of, think of Joel's yeah. personality. He didn't create Nebula from hell to, to be like a, a money stream coming in. Like he's no, not no, out there I pushing know. it for that reason. He's pushing it because he wants people to experience something he created. Yeah, no. I, so, I and he's said multiple times yeah. whether it sells a lot or it doesn't sell that much as long as I know there's people out there experiencing it. That's what matters. And I think even if, you know, if you have that kind of personality that likes people appreciating something that you comes out of your mind that comes out of your creativity, I don't think any amount of money could change that. I think you would find find ways to put put your money into this. Like it's, if I had a billion dollars, I would find a way to, to invest in small companies to do stuff like that. It might not be necessarily my hands in it, but that's still something I can say, okay, you know, I get to be a part of this, not necessarily hands on, but this is the different role I can play at that. Yeah. And, and what was sad for the last 10 years ish was more of just going, oh, like, are they really not making games anymore? Like, cause I mean, like they were like every game they come out with is just like ridiculous, you know, it's awesome. They're just like something new and, you know, crazy. So it was like, oh, it sucks that like. I mean, yeah, that's great. If their if their business is taking over, it's like, ah, oh, they lost that, you know, one, you know, bit to like go and try to make a new game or, and again, like, and, and Dave, you know, Dave was saying like, you know, obviously it could be 10 years. They announce it tomorrow. All is forgiven, you know, <laughs> but it's like, I just wish they said, you know what? We really like making games, but we like waiting for the next piece, next bit of technology that really pushes the limit. And it's just not there yet. Like, you know, they're, they're waiting on something that's just going to be really 
interesting to do. And I can respect that. It just sucks that the I wish they could have said a little bit they, they mostly because the game left better. on a freaking cliffhanger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they could have. I don't think <clears> there's <throat> like I respect them a ton, but I don't think there's any excuse for the lack of communication. Because yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, there's no excuse for that. Yeah, regardless of, of whether or not they wanted to make a game anymore, I think any, everybody would have respected them if yeah after getting mad at them they would have respected them. Is after Portal Two they said, "Hey, we've decided we're just no longer a game company. We'll still support Steam. We just don't want to make games anymore." People would be mad, then people would get over it. But I don't think that was it for them, though. Honestly, no, I don't think I, it was. I, yeah. But I think what was going on behind the scenes is they had some creative missteps or tried to push something out and based on other games that are out now, just didn't feel like it was innovative enough or could could compete in the, the direction gaming's going now. So I, I, I imagine if you had access to their archives and stuff, they've got a lot of scrapped projects. Probably, yeah. Yeah, he said in the AMA that his favorite game was Portal 2, and the reason why is because he was so close to Half Life that he was very hard to like to see it objectively. And so, since he wasn't very a part of Portal 2 like directly, that was something he like really, really cared about. So he's like, for me, he said for him, it was very hard to like work on Half Life stuff because he all only sees it as missed opportunities to create something even better. I, I, and I was like, I, I can I cannot feel, I can't think Half Life is dead at this point if they're still confirming working on a movie. Yeah, yeah, there's, oh yeah. There's no reason to push that, that story along to to either get people who were were fans before or to create new fans to then not do anything with it. Yeah, I really. All I can hope is that whatever there's that whatever he said, it's something that. <laughs> Dave and I, we might be able to go to E3 this year, and he know we know I'm gonna just cry my eyes out if I happen to be at the E3 Half Life or something related is announced. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Joel's just gonna pull out a sword and just stab himself in the chest. <laughs> this is all uh, I needed. End it now. End it now. I'm like, I'm like, hold on. The, the sword's like, no, Joel, the game's not out yet. It's like, oh no, but Joel, that's not your sword, buddy. Put it back. <laughs> You're like, I'll never be disappointed this way. Put that away too. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was that was a wave of emotions this week for me. Oh man, I, I did laugh because when they announced the AMA, I'm like, oh, that's gonna be cool. I warned Joel that um, I think it was ahead of time that you know Gabe didn't like choose this. They invited him. He's like, oh yeah, I'll do it. So I was like, don't expect anything real to be answered because he's just doing it for fun. And then he actually answered the question. That caught me by surprise. That was cool. When I got in my car and I saw it, I literally pulled up and someone said, he just said, yeah. I went, ah. I was like screaming in my car, holy shit. Joel's just pulling the out. handbrake on his car while flipping up his Apple Watch like, <laughs> scroll, scroll, <laughs> scroll faster. Yeah. Um, a bit of news just came out. I'm going to intercept right before James's bit of news because this is too important to not talk about. Stephen Gagan is going to direct the Division movie starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Jessica Chastain. <laughs> Who's who? The director? What? Uh, he directed Gold. Let me see. Did he direct? Huh, that's the one with Matthew McConaughey. Hmm. That. Yeah. I I think the Division idea actually would make a good movie. Uh, come on, it's. What? What's dumb about it? Name no, 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 your top no, no, five not dumb game about the movies. Division. It's just how many more Maybe. times, man? Like how many more times they be like. <laughs> We know there's literally never been a good video game movie, but maybe this time, maybe this time, not counting the 90s Mario movie, obviously, obviously, <laughs> obviously, yeah, that one, <laughs> respect, respect. Although, I know, I'm curious to know who's going to actually get it right. Gabe said that the Half-Life movies are still in the works. He also answered yep. that question. Man, it's the I promised that. movies. It yeah, could be, it could be the first the one. What does in the works mean? How long do you need to make a movie? Like, if the movie were actually being made yeah, right Joel, now. Yeah, Joel, how long do you need to make no, a movie? No, 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 okay. <laughs> Joel's movie's going to be done before the Half-Life movie. Like, let's just be realistic. If they were actually filming the movie, like, word would have leaked. Like, you, it's hard to hide filming a movie. Like, pre-production and stuff, yeah, you can hide it, but... Actually, Clo filming Clo the movie? Ten Cloverfield was hidden. No one knew anything about it. Yeah, but that that's a movie they literally could have just filmed underground, like for obvious <laughs> reasons. I'm saying <laughs> that movie was essentially yeah. like a Half Life movie. If you've seen it, I that, was, that was actually they, really cool. They could have busted that movie out in like a couple weeks of filming. Though I'm saying like that's different from probably a Half Life movie. I don't know. That, that wasn't a couple weeks to. Yeah. Okay. 
No, 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 actual, actual. <laughs> they could have just done that with an iPhone and filmed no, it for a couple of hours. Pl- it would have been done. Pl- plenty <laughs> well, of movies. Joel, no, he's plenty the of movies the actually YouTube shoot. Cameraman. Plenty of so. movies shoot over a couple weeks, like smaller movies like that. No, it's usually like three or four months. Like big movies are like eight to ten months. Big movies, yes. I'm saying there's plenty of smaller movies, and that could definitely qualify as a smaller movie. It has a very small cast and very few sets. I so don't know how long. That would make Norman a what sized movie? All right. I think Joel and I are Googling the same thing. James, what's your news item? Uh, it's not really a news item. I just I have an answer now, and I forgot to mention earlier. So the Sega Saturn had the shortest release window of any console. They knew about it in, in advance. Like, people knew that they were developing mm-hmm. something. But they went to E3, went out on stage, said the Sega Saturn would be $399 which is like over $600 in today's money. And it's available in stores right now. So that was the shortest release window. Not bad. Not bad. Joel, Granted, that's a lot of money for people to not have saved up for a console that they weren't expecting to be out. Yeah. That's why it flopped. Uh, principal yeah. photography began on October 20th, 2014. They filmed in chronological order on only one set. And then the scenes involving the other stuff kind of outdoors were shot in early December 2014 filming into December 15th 2014 so less than two months uh for everything and it sounds like they took a break in the middle there so not two weeks I didn't say two weeks I'm pretty sure you said two weeks no oh my God. all right I think you, you said, said you five days you said no. two weeks. I think like I said one a, afternoon, a few hours, like forty-eight right. hour I think film you said festival, forty-two film. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think they said they turn it on like all those movies that are shot in one take. You just turn the camera on. You're like, yeah, all yeah. right, guys, one and Ash. done. <laughs> it actually took Wax less time now. to shoot the movie than the actual movie ended up being. <laughs> it's oh, a yeah, lot they, of slow motion it shots, fast and they just slowed it down. Yeah, that would actually be pretty incredible if someone figured that out. Uh, it is now time for the mail. Well, damn, we gave you room and you just blow it. I know. Sorry. I was going to wait. Now, Grant wrote into casual shenanigans at gmail.com, just like you can. Why would they do that, James? Because they love us and they want to talk to us. They want to be a part of the show. So Grant wrote in and he says, can I add Joel on PSN? I'm not going to bother him with invites. I'm just interested in what he's playing since he's the only main PS4 player on the podcast. Thanks. It sure would be a treat. Joel, would you like random people to friend you on PSN? No. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you're willing to. I I would never play games with you. But again, I don't play games with really anyone. <laughs> so you'll so play games with us hardly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But just know you have pricked my heart that you've wanted to be my, become my friend. Is that is that something you say? Prick no. my heart. Is, uh, that, is that like a bad thing by like, oh, you pricked my heart. You're like a prick in like, my heart. What, what, am I, what am I thinking? Like you, I mean, I, you've touched I my heart. heart. You touched you, my, touch my heart. Yeah. You touched my heart is definitely a thing. <laughs> pricked my heart. Pricked uh, my heart. <laughs> you touched me. You've stuck your prick in my heart. Both things we don't say. <laughs> All right. So uh, that'd be a good segue, Grant, because he asked it in, in the, with the best of intentions. Uh, yeah. Dave and I have kind of had this problem for years. When we first started getting a few people watching our YouTube channels, I mean, we're talking about like a couple hundred subscribers. You get those first few people are like, hey, can I add you on Steam? Maybe I'll play Daisy with you sometime. And we're like, wow, cool. Someone actually cares. And then you quickly discover, oh, this is a double edged sword. Because you'd be, we'd be recording Daisy and be, doop, you guys playing? Doop, can I come join you? Doop, hello? So <laughs> I think Dave and I, I think I can speak for us both. We We have the rule now, we just don't friend people online yeah, I, unless we i hit know the origin friend limit actually back in the day yeah. and i still haven't finished culling the friends list out because people change their names too so now i'm like, like afraid to do a complete culling but yeah i definitely hit the friends limit at one point and that's why i drew the line and so yeah it's really it's just because i you probably have the best of intentions but we have to draw the line somewhere and we can't even play with our actual <laughs> friends we know in real life and see on a regular basis we don't play with them as much as we want to so we have to draw the line somewhere. Now, I will say some of our friends that we game online with on a regular basis, we met through YouTube and through the podcast. So 
some people have just showed up in TeamSpeak and started hanging out and we've become friends. Like, it is a thing that actually happens, but we're probably not going to randomly add you on, on PSN or Steam. You got to so, put in but, the time with us yeah. first. Yeah, I was going to say, you got to put in the time. You got to work for it. Yeah, Joel's never going to show up in TeamSpeak. Don't worry about it. Joel's <laughs> like, work for it. I'm getting the password protected channel. You can sit in the lobby <laughs> and grovel. <laughs> <laughs> Me and John made a password protected channel and then I got pissed because Dave showed up out of nowhere. I was like, how'd you get in here? How'd you know the password? He's like, I'm Adam. I'm like, oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I just struck myself in there. <laughs> but I thought you remembered the password from our uh, our Bloodborne days. I was like, because that oh, was I do. the password. Okay. Oh, I do. Well, I, it would have well, been the first password it? I tried, too. Ooh. <laughs> I, I do, I air, do I air Joel and John's <laughs> password live no, on the secret. air? Keep it safe. <laughs> It is pretty secret. I don't know how oh. safe it is. <laughs> yeah, All right, reason. moving on. Um, I can't pronounce your name. I'm very sorry, but Edges, E D I J S. He is definitely from a Scandinavian sounding country. Uh, he wrote in and said, "Hi, I just wanted to give a quick rundown on games that have had a profound impact on me from our recent um, podcast on chasing unique game experiences. Nice. Said, I've ne I've never really quite got those same experiences which I have with these particular games." And I'm skimming through your email a little bit, uh, just for time's sake. So here are some of the games that had a significant impact on him. Operation Flashpoint Cold War Crisis. It blew me away. And the full game, including all the expansions, he played the demo, it was amazing. Full game, including all the expansions, did not fail to impress me. That gritty feeling of war, the story, the world, the timeline, the weapons, the characters, everything. Just amazing. And yes, the subsequent Arma titles are fun and all, but they actually lose by trying to add things on. I feel like Arma 3 is the best of the iterations, except for the futuristic theme, I suppose. And don't forget the modding community. Simply freaking amazing. And that is true. Arma, for better or for worse, Joel has got the little smile going already. No, I, I wasn't smiling because of that. Okay. Uh, Arma, for better or for <laughs> worse. That Arma smirk. I never smile for Arma. <laughs> is one of the you, unique experiences. Smirk, anyway. Uh, driver, I enjoyed I enjoyed driving myself very much, and somehow this arcade drive in the city game hit all the right spots for me. I played through Driver 2 as well, which is basically a standalone expansion. Age of Empires 2, yeah. Mm. I am super stoked on how successful the HD version is, and it just goes to show how objectively awesome this game is. No other game after it has ever captured that RTS feeling. Soldier of Fortune and Soldier of Fortune 2 Double Helix. Uh, yes, even though both are somewhat different, they have that special FPS feeling for me. I really can't put my finger on it. I guess it's that simplistic and not overly overthought or overdone arcadish representation of a gun for hire. Almost like a good 90s action movie. Honorable mentions are Call of Duty 1 and 2, Medal of Honor, both the original and the 2010 one. Colin McRae, Rally 1 and 2. I yes, yes, I realize that's mostly shooting stuff up and driving cars, but that's my kind of entertainment. Keep up the fun themes and happy gaming. Thanks, Edges. And I'm very sorry, I'm definitely mispronouncing your name. Uh, that reminds me, I could have done in the uh, what are you playing this week? We should have talked about our Age of Empires two game. Oh man, I don't I don't remember uh, what. <laughs> I don't remember. What? Uh, wait, what? Hey, you guys mm -hmm. won. Okay, you shouldn't you should be shouldn't be. No, I it was I, not much I ran away. I ran away. That's that's <laughs> how you win, Dave. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> that's how you Daisy. Yeah, a lot of fun though. It was a lot of fun. I like to play again. Jeremiah is uh, an amazing like, Age of Empires. I just like that you think I'm I'm good at, at one thing. That's all I I needed out of life. You're good at other things like <laughs> armor. Just I'm just <laughs> You're good at being tall. I I'm just kidding, Joel. I'm just kidding. I think that's the only game where I'm like definitively better than the rest of you guys, like by a, a oh, significant margin. By far. But there's a thing. Although like, Eggert says he wants to play. Ooh. And he supposedly is really good. I he would actually amazing. watch this. I think can we should eSport watch this. Can I call in my brothers? I feel like it should be a one on one. You one on versus one. Eggard. Well, can yeah. I just battle for the ages? Can I just sub my brother in instead of me <laughs> on his busted old laptop? <laughs> Actually, I, I really want to watch this now. Like, I would totally look put the, look on the at screen. the fear coming across his face. Ooh, he's starting to sweat. <laughs> he's defi he was definitively better, but now he's like, uh, my brother. We just the rest of you, our, not brother. the rest of everybody. All right. Ooh, speaking uh, of which, oh shit, I need it. There's a game I need to buy. All right, remembered. Fill us in on how that goes in a minute. Uh, Zachary also wrote in casual shenanigans. I got shot by. <laughs> he says, "Hey Dave, I got to say you're my favorite now that I hear about your love for the zone. Mm. Which one is your favorite? Uh, the Mine is Call of Pripyat. I too have finished the game a bunch of times. 
Some days, nothing can scratch that itch like killing freedom potheads with your AKM because 762 and then watching the rubbles roll in when you sell their crap to barkeep. I don't know what any of this means. Have you tried? <laughs> I understand all of this. Have you tried OGSE? Good mod. Love the show. Thanks, gents. Zach, have you tried OGSE, Dave? I don't know what OGSE is unless it's the new mod that just won uh, mod of the year, in which case I have not, but it's installed. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, anyone have any? Th oh, wait. No, no. It's time for comment of the week. I almost mm. forgot. Comment of the week. The part of the podcast where Dave and I share with you the reasons why we drink. Dave, what do you got <laughs> for us? <laughs> I had a new Fallout video since the live pod last podcast. So that means we have some delicious Fallout comments. Uh, first of all, I can't tell if this is a compliment or not, but the comment is... <laughs> you and Joel's retarded laughter makes me so happy. Thank hey, no, no, no. you. Read it, read it right. Your and Joel's retarded laughter. My brain autocorrected. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, as Joel vomits into a trash can off camera, <laughs> um, whenever I see one of General Dave's settlements, my snake gets really sneaky. Somebody wow, watches the podcast. <laughs> Hey Joel, uh, are you back yet, buddy? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> are you are you crying, Joel? Did you read the AMA again? I uh, yeah. <laughs> I I got a I got one I'm pretty happy with recently. Ooh. This is exactly as it was written in all caps. Why are so much idiots in the world that put annotations where you can't close then? <laughs> and all I replied was was them with the asterisks. <laughs> <laughs> but why thank you youtube there's been some other good ones though um we had a gta video where a bunch of us were hanging out and having fun and crashing cars into each other and two of those people happened to be women so of course somebody felt the need to bring that up uh where is the comment oh dang it's already it's vanished <laughs> through the feed but it was you know your lady friend's not doing much for stereotypes <laughs> <laughs> my lady friend can, can you please reply to that comment just neither is your comment neckbeard <laughs> actually let me see uh, I think oh, I did man. if I can find it real quick uh, one second uh, Lord Sheffield it was his comment <laughs> he, he's the sneaky snake okay okay <laughs> Your lady friend is not doing much for stereotypes. I responded with, you're not doing much for stereotypes either. Responded with, oh, come on. It's a little funny. I don't actually think women are worse drivers, but when someone fails that hard, you have to poke a little fun. You just have to. And to be honest, the comment was the least offensive way about bringing up the stereotype of women being bad drivers because the statement does not affirm whether it is true or not. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tyler, um, Tyler hopped in and said, Oh, but please, milady, a man of your caliber mustn't disrespect a woman like that. How <laughs> dare you make an attempt to perpetuate stereotypes and use this poor, helpless woman as your target? Shame on you. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> you effing peasant. <laughs> so, anyway, that's YouTube comments. Joel, aren't you glad you don't spend more time there? Oh, my gosh. I would, I just would like. I just wouldn't bother. I would just you turn used to all live comments for, off for salty YouTube comments. Yeah, actually, it is a little bit weird, Joel, that like a big chunk of how you spend your time online used to be trolling other people with your YouTube channel <laughs> just for hateful comments. Well, I mean, my videos were just all sarcastic and trolls. No, no, I know. But it yeah. is funny that like as you've gotten older, you're at the point where you're like, eh, just and eh, eh, well, eh. to me, it's kind of like. I, I don't even reply to those people. I just enjoy seeing them get super angry. Um, but uh, just thinking just the time wasting of like replying to people that are just so dumb. <laughs> mm. I like how that's the part that bothers you. Like, oh, they're just so dumb. I just don't want to talk to them. <laughs> uh. Uh. Oh, I do have my next chapter of my radio drama i just don't have it recorded <laughs> okay so, well, you have to imagine to next he's week. gonna do it live on the air right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i was trying to decide if i should do it do it like that because 
it's getting complicated where I'm like, this is going to be a lot of work for sounds. The storylines are getting a little out of control. <laughs> you guys thought Game of Thrones was worth the wait. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, this next book, this next audio, it, it just ties it all together. Where are you um, at in Chimera? Yeah. <laughs> where are you at in that book? I don't know. I mean, I could... He's repressing a lot of feelings right now. That's where he's at. <laughs> Dark Times. I'm on page sixty nine. Ooh. <laughs> do, you, do you guys do you guys want one page? Sure. I remember sure. that one comment we got that said, "Please God, don't let him read more from that book." <laughs> so this is for whoever wrote that in. <laughs> page sixty nine. Sixty nine. Mm. Dagier looked away. I'm sorry. Wait, what was that name? <laughs> Spell that. It's. Are you D-A questioning how to pronounce something, Jeremiah? J I E H. All right, keep Dage. going. Dagier. Yeah, I, mean, yeah I, I think it's Dagier. Dagier, it is. Dagier looked away. I'm sorry, younger brother. You needed to be. Flander makes his own choices. <laughs> Bitterness crept into his tone, even though he tried to keep it out. I don't own much. him. I simply live with him. <laughs> and with the results of those choices, this project that I designed. Dagier looked down at her hands. I was meant to grow. You just not that manly voice you were doing. I'm just going to go with it. It was extremely potent. Designed for a specific individual. The neurotransmitter and endorphin Dagier response played by is intense. Author. All right, hold on real quick. Pause. Joel, you are reading these pages in order, right? I, I am, still yeah. I have no idea I what's happening. I assume it would be used to allow direct optical access to the net. She frowned. It could permit enough of an information overload to cause a serious disruption in the user's reality. I'm sounding like Keanu Reeves now. <laughs> Why are you telling me this? David felt a small coldness. <laughs> what the shit? A small David, coldness. David felt, That's David my felt name. a small coldness growing in his belly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an Audi, it's an Innie. <laughs> My contractor gave me a gene scan, standard and certified. She shouldn't meet his eyes. She wouldn't meet his eyes. <laughs> Afterward, some of the sequences bothered me. They were unusual, and they seemed familiar. I hadn't retained the full code for safety reasons, but I remember two unusual sequences, so I ran them against the gene records I have on file. They correlate quite closely with Flanders' code. What? David whispered. <laughs> The odds of the code was indeed as him. His are very small, but it is not impossible. <laughs> Dagier opened the dark oak door behind her. <laughs> I can't give you her name. You understand. I have work to do. An inside note in Whoa, Pan... Whoa, dude. <laughs> in Pan Euro. Full Bill and Ted no, here, Joel. Had commissioned a custom-made, highly illegal kicker for Flander. Payment for what job? Flander knew the ghosts and information dealers, but web nodes kept a careful distance from the talk peddlers. They brought information, yes, but they never associated themselves with any one peddler, t- peddler too open. Production shifted to new markets with the speed of lect- electrons in the worldwide economic web. Information security made the nodes money, got them there first to claim the new markets. If word got around that a node, knelt, node dealt with an operator like Flander, the node could end up blacklisted outside. Dagier's node had taken considerable risk, never mind the legal penalty penalty, <laughs> penalty for commissioning a kicker, which suggested that, that Flanders' part of the deal was seriously illegal. What? No freaking clue. I got nothing out of 70. that. Dark I, web things. I hate the word peddler. It just sounds so <laughs> dirty. It reminds me of d- diddler. <laughs> 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 well, my mind hadn't gone there, but here we are. <laughs> Dave, uh, before we wrap up, I, I I wanted to see if Dave could talk for just a second about Harry Potter because oh, he I said he something. Say G-Sync. Dang it. He told me something the other day that I was very surprised. I, I went home and I was like, <clears throat> Joy, I got to tell you this. This is what Dave told me. Dave was saying how he was like, wow, this is a very big toss up between Harry Potter and the Witcher books. And I was just like, I was never, ever expect. I knew Dave was going to enjoy it once he got past the first book and realized how deep the books can go. Um, yeah. But he really, he's thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, and again, I'm not trying to turn you against Witcher, but I was just very surprised that you would even, that <laughs> well, made me very happy like, that you enjoyed it that much. 
I was telling Jeremiah today, a, a part of it is that I have not officially read the last few Witcher novels. I read uh, some pretty good fan translation ebooks that had some grammar errors and were formatted oddly, um, but I haven't read the official English versions of the last two novels. Or was it three? At least, at least the last two novels. Um, but yeah, before I started reading Harry Potter recently, um, my my top three definitely fantasy series, but maybe even all fiction ever for me um, was the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. The end of Return of the King is just crushingly sad, but also so good. Um, and then uh, the Witcher novels, the original seven seven novels were was it is it six? I don't remember. Anyway, the main novel series was um, better than Game of Thrones for me by far. Game of Thrones still has two more books left, but I'm not holding out hope for ever seeing them. And uh, even just comparing the Game of Thrones that we have now to the Witcher novels, I, Witcher definitely took top top place for me. But uh, Harry Potter surprised me. I knew it was going to be enjoyable, but the first three books were most definitely uh, kids' novels. But you become so invested in the characters, and then the world building accelerates to a point where um, everything just ramps up in the last four or so books. I read the last four books in this series in four weeks. The last book I read in four days, like 860 pages or so. Um, and at the end, I like I, I was telling Joel, I had the same lethargy that I had after Lord of the Rings, where I was like, I don't want to play any games. I don't want to read anything else. I just it's kind of just over. It's like saying goodbye to a good friend. And that's how I've always known that a book series has stuck with me is when after it's over, it's like you've lost something, even if the ending was good. Um, so I think right now, Harry Potter is at least tied for my second ever favorite fantasy series. Maybe which book are you on with Witcher? I, f I finished all of Harry Potter now. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I finished all of them. Yeah. Yeah. We've been watching the movies at Jeremiah's house. It's been, a, it's been a blast. We've been watching every couple, maybe three or four weeks. We watch another one, but yeah, we're on the sixth movie next. Um, and then it's exciting. Once we're done, we'll be able to watch the fantastic beast movie and everything. Joel, you, but to forced, me, it was exciting. Me, you forced me to watch the movies. Yeah, like you I, kept talking about, it, kept talking about it, and I'd seen part of the first one. I was like, "eh, it was okay," and then I binge watched like five of the movies, <laughs> uh, six of the movies before the you know the new ones had started to come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was I was telling Joel like I'm actually glad that I waited until now to read them because uh, if I had read them when I was that age and then having to wait for each book and then like growing up with the books and then having them end like that would have been I would have been like dead for a month it's just like <laughs> medically dead when it was over um, imagine if Half-Life were a book series <laughs> um, like Joel's been telling me about all the new and exciting Harry Potter things about um, what is it Fantastic Beast and there's the new play coming out and I'm like honestly all I want is more stories about the original gang like Eventually, I'll be happy that it ended so well. But right now, I want more of that or nothing else. Like, you just, I don't care about anything else. We've, we've all been there, Dave. <laughs> yeah. So, did you yeah, finish the books fans. before you started watching the movies? We or had, had you we seen got any a, of the movies? We watched before. two of the movies, and then I started the books. And, and Joel initially was saying that I should watch the movies first to really enjoy them. But um, I've never, a, a good book to me <clears throat> cannot mess with a good movie based off of it. I can enjoy both equally, and to me, the books were incredible. I'm very glad that I dove into the books before we continue through the movies, because now uh, the movies have to move so quickly, but I can pick out characters I recognize that are just kind of background, but I know who you know Percy is and stuff like that. I, I can really appreciate not only the depth of the books, but how well done the movies are, too, at the same time. I'm glad I went ahead and, and just read, although... We were worried, like, oh, Dave, hurry up and, and read read more of the books so we can keep watching the movies. <laughs> and it's like, I'm ready to watch, like, seven hours of movies now. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's just get through them. All right, everybody. That's all for the podcast this evening, this week. As always, thank you guys for coming out and being part of the show. You can write into casual shenanigans at gmail.com to be a part of the show. You can tweet at casual shenaniga. You can find us at CasualShenanigans.com, uh, our YouTube channel. We have a Facebook and there's Twitter and all that stuff. Links in the description. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out. Thank you for being a part of the show. As always, most of you guys are pretty cool. And until next time, stay casual. <laughs> until next time, don't you dare friend us on Steam. <laughs> <laughs>